Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Eaves. Thanks for joining me today. In this video I will demonstrate TrustSec enforcement on a Cisco ISR4431 router and that's for a user on a Meraki MR16 wireless access point. Now the Meraki access points do not support TrustSec natively today but we can still use them in, in a TrustSec deployment as I, will, as I will demonstrate. So this is a simple diagram of the demo. At the top you can see three server groups. Remember that TrustSec is about group based policy. So these are servers in a group. So the dev server group and through ICE is assigned a security group tag of 11. The prod server group assigned SGT19 and the PCI server group assigned SGT14. Now these IP to SGT mappings are created in ICE and they're sent down to the ISR 4K through a protocol called SXP, which is Security Group Tag Exchange Protocol. So that's how the ISR learns about the static mappings for the servers or the server groups. Now once the ISR knows about these static mappings, what I'll do is make a request to ICE to see if there's any policy to download. And I have a very simple policy, which is from my user group. So when my user logs on, they're going to be a member of the, S of the TS Engineering Group. So the policy is from that user group to the PCI server group, I'm going to deny IP. So then down at the user side, then I've got my TSEng1, who's a member of the TS Engineering group. They're going to log on to this laptop. It's going to connect wirelessly to the Meraki AP. And the AP is going to make a radius request to ICE. And through ICE authorization, we're going to assign a security group tag. So ICE will dynamically learn the IP address of the user and will assign a tag and we'll have this IP to SGT mapping and that also will be put into the SXP table and sent down to the ISR 4K. So the ISR 4K then will know the user mapping, it'll know the destination mapping for the servers and it can apply this policy. So let's get over to ICE then and show some of this configuration. So to start with we go to Work Center and on the TrustSec menu we can look at components and to start with we have the security group tags. So this is where we have the security group name and the associated security group tag. Then on the static mapping, this is where we configure the static mapping for the servers. So we have the IP address of the servers and the associated group that they're put into. Now once you configure this mapping, this is then put into the SXP database in ICE and we can look at that under SXP under all SXP mappings. And you can see here those static mappings are indeed put into the SXP database. And under SXP devices we can see we have a connection. So this connection which is on or up we have connected to the ISR 4K. So all these mappings should be sent down to the ISR 4K. So if we have a look at the 4K we can look at these mappings. We do show CTS role based SGT map all and we see those mappings here. Resident on the 4K and they're sent via SXP, obviously sent by the Identity Services Engine. So that's the destination mappings. Now as I said, once the destination mappings are in place, the ISR knows it needs to protect them, so it should download a policy. So if we have a look at the policy, we can have a look at the permissions and you can see indeed it has downloaded a policy. And I have this permission from the TS Engineering Group happens to be security group tag 17 to the PCI server group which is SGT 14 I have this policy which is the deny IP so the policy has been downloaded dynamically from ICE and is resident on the ISR now before we jump over to our wireless client um, which is here we can have a look at the configuration of um, the AP through the Meraki dashboard so if we go back to web browser let's go back to my dashboard and let's log in. So I'm logging in and through here I can see the status of my AP and I can see the configuration. So under wireless if I click on access points I should be able to see the status of my AP. So this is my AP I'm going to be using. I can click on the name and I can show the status and some of the top level information. Now also under wireless I can look at SSIDs. So I can see and have a look at the SSIDs which are configured. You can see this one is enabled. I've got kerno meraki and it's set up for 802.1x. So that's what we should see from the client. 
and the last screen I'll show you in here is the access control this is the configuration on the AP starting with it's set up for WPA2 Enterprise and if I scroll down you can see I've got both radius authentication and radius accounting enabled they're both using a host of um, my identity services engine and of course accounting is using 1812 uh, sorry auth authentication is using 1812 and accounting port 1813 and I also have radius change of authorization enabled as you can see there and if I scroll down you can see some other settings I've got I've enabled layer 3 roaming and you can see the band selection there at the bottom so that's the AP so let's go over to my client this is my client and I can connect to the SSID if I look at my wireless connections I've got I can see Kerno Meraki and I can connect to it so let's connect to the Meraki AP let's have a look to see what IP address has been assigned so 10.2.30.11 so this should have made a request to ICE. If we go over to our live logs in ICE, we should have been able to see this authentication. And you can see here, yes, from our Meraki access point, we've got a we've got a radius authentication, and it's from TSNG1. That's our user that's logged into the PC. And the authorization profile is that it's assigned a security group tag. So that's what we've assigned through ICE. TS Engineering, which is SGT17. Now, also in ICE, we should have learnt this IP to SGT mapping and put it into the SXP table. So, if we look at the SXP table and looking at the mappings, you see here this is our dynamic entry from our user. So, the IP address is dynamically learnt, it's assigned the TS Engineering group, and it's put into the SXP table. Now because we've got this connection sent going down to the ISR 4K, we should have this mapping sent down to the ISR 4K. And there it is. We've got the IP address, dynamically learnt, plus SGT 17, and this is resident now on the ISR 4K. So the 4K now has both the user mapping and the destination mappings for the servers. And therefore we should be able to enforce policy. So let's have a look. If we go to the client, go to a browser can I get through to the development server yes that's fine can I get through to the production server yes that's fine can I get through to the PCI server no I can't it's connecting so why is that so let's have a look at the counters here role based counters and you can see here from 17 to 14 so that's from SGT 17 to 14 remember that's TS engineering to the PCI server group I'm getting traffic denied and if we refresh the screen you see that's going up so this is the reason why we can't get through to the PCI server it's because we're TrustSec enforcing on the ISR 4K now I can show um, that we can get this to work just by changing the policy so in Identity Services Engine we can actually jump over to the um, TrustSec policy so this is our policy just looking at the source tree we can see from TS engineering to the PCI server group we're denying the traffic so of course we could just edit this and instead of a deny IP maybe set a permit IP we can save it and we can push it down to the ISR 4K and now if we look at the 4K let's have a look at the permissions now from TS engineering to PCI we're now permitting traffic so if we go over to my client, can I still get through to development? Yes. Still get through to production? Can I now get through to PCI server? Yes, I can. So this is TrustSec enforcement using oh, TrustSec enforcement on a router on the ISR 4K, but with users on a Meraki access point. So that concludes the demonstration. Thanks very much for watching. For more information, please visit www.cisco.com slash go slash trussec.